Good early spring morning to all of you. I'm Brenda, I'm Jim's wife, and we are working horses with Jim. Today we have an adventure going on, but first of all, I wanted to give you a little update on our percher on horse, Ken, who has had some leg swelling issues. He today has completed his round of antibiotics, and we both were remarking this morning how really good he's doing. He um, is walking around. We decided to put him out with the colts today because we felt like he was up to it. And it's just good for his morale to be out with the other horses as he always usually is. And when I put him out this morning, he had a little attitude for the colts, which was good to see. Put his ears back, but He's been out laying down and he's been walking around eating. So we're very happy. As you can see, we are in full swing mud season here. Well, I shouldn't say full swing. We still got a little bit of frozenness out here, but we are on an adventure today. Jim and Bill and our young stud Baron are heading out to do some um, logging today. So come on along with us. Well, we did it again. We messed up on our audio. Sorry about that, guys. It's just for a little while. But anyways, um, here I am driving Bill and Baron out to the logging cart and asking Baron to step over the pole, which he does just about perfect. And then I'm coming up here to, to hitch him up. Well, I bet I've got you guys wondering what in the world I'm doing. Well, I'm actually hitching on to the skid steer. Brenda's in the skid steer, and I have a long chain hitched to the skid steer, and we're gonna head out through the field. The skid steer is running, you can't hear it, but it is running, and Brenda's attempting to keep the chain somewhat tight, but not actually having the horses pull her. But we have some spots right here in the field that are very wet and I'm concerned that we might get stuck if we try to drive the skid steer through it. So instead of waiting to, until we get stuck and then getting in the mud and trying to hitch it all up, I decided I'm just going to hitch a long chain on and head on out through the field and we may or may not even need it. But if I kind of work my way through the fields, kind of stay out of the mud holes and just have Brenda follow me, She's going to know where to go because she's going to be following me. And if it gets a little slick for any reason, the horses are right there to pull it. And we should not have any issues at all. And it worked really good. I have one of the spot further along in the woods that are pretty big holes of mud and water that we'll probably have to do this again. But we'll unhitch it up here in a little bit.
two or three days ago, I was in here for my first day of skidding logs, skidding firewood with these horses, and I actually skidded the firewood pieces up to here, at least a bunch of them right to this point here. But just beyond here, there's a pretty big wet hole in the trail, so I decided I'm not gonna skid them through that wet hole, and so I need to get beyond that to make a new place for my logs. When things dry up a little bit more, I'll come back in here with my, with my wagon and load the wood onto the wagon with the skid steer and haul it back out to the farm. Fortunately, this ground is quite high and dry, kind of stony actually, but it's still pretty stable ground so I can come in here and cut firewood in most places. As you can see, spring is coming upon us, but we still, the further we go back, the more snow it seems like there is. So here's the big mud puddle that I told you about in the woods. There's that one there and then we're coming upon another one. And I was just a little bit concerned, but as it turned out, I think the skid steer would have come through it just perfectly fine. The ground is pretty good solid bottom underneath the water. So it's still nice to have. Let's get the horses just in case. Off to our left. There's a little spot for a little skidway. We'll be skidding some of the logs and there's another spot just ahead of us also. Brenda's gonna go from here and go home and she says she's gonna make some cupcakes and she might be back out for coffee break in a little bit too. So it is later in the morning and I decided to come back out and see Jim and um, I wanted to show you how cupcakes too. Yes, there's a function going on at church tonight and I made some cupcakes for that. I told Jim I'd bring him out a cupcake and some coffee and um, I wanted to see how these are guys are doing with logging but Jim tells me that he's had a lot of problems since I was gone. I don't know if you want to share that or just yeah. leave so, it in the past. <laughs> the horses have been doing great to start with. Um, there's been no problems or issues with the horses. The problem has been 100% mine. I just, I got two or three trees out and everything went well. And then I cut one tree and didn't it fall right into a prong of another tree. And I had to do some things that you just don't do with a three-year-old on a second in the woods. I had to actually hitch on to that tree to pull it down. And they actually pulled it great until the prong really dropped into that, until the tree really dropped into the prong. And some of you guys that are lawyers, you know what I'm talking about. It just, the, it just stopped dead. And so I had to cut another tree, cut that tree down and had a terrible time getting that one down and didn't that fall into another tree with a prong in it. So here I am with two prongs and it, it was just a nightmare. And I, if I had a camera, sure, I could have showed you, but I don't think I would have because I, I, I you really shouldn't be hitting, hitching three-year-olds onto trees like that. Now I didn't really hitch them onto anything that they couldn't pull, um, but I, it, it, it could have been such. I say they couldn't pull it. They started it and they went quite a ways with it and then it just kind of stu stuck in that prong and then you're done. Um, 
But anyways, I finally got this last tree down and it took me quite a while. I had a lot of troubles, nothing to do with the horses, 100% to do with what I was doing in the cutting end of things. But I finally got it down. So I got a whole bunch of stuff here. Now I have two trees here now that were not marked. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about this log job. Well, I guess I could even write, yeah. So we ended up cutting two trees down that weren't marked, which I really, of course, obviously did not want to do. Um, this is our own land and we have, it's all, it's all marked. We just cut the firewood out, the junk wood out. A little bit of background on this particular lot. Um, about in 1997, I believe it was, we had a major, Eight. 98 was it? Yep. Major ice storm that went through here. And it did a tremendous amount of damage to these maples. This is a, a big maple grove. And um, probably it should have been cut off then, um, but it, it was not now. Even to back, go back a little bit farther, um, we bought this property in, well, not this part of the property, but our farm in 1991. And this was an adjoining part, actually part of the original farm. And we've since purchased this section up here. But anyways, before the year before we bought the farm, um, this was all logged heavily and heavy kind of meaning um, they kind of took the best stuff and left the rest. So because of that, there was a lot of uh, weaker and poor trees. And so when the ice storm hit, it did a lot of damage. And so um, now I'm just starting to get the junk out of here. And this particular tree, especially, I surely did not want to cut because this is a nice little maple here that I had to cut because there's no way I could get it down otherwise. Um, so I did, and I will utilize it as a log, so it's not gonna be a complete waste. But anyways, um, that's kind of the back history of this, the background of this lot. Um, we're just basically taken out at firewood, um, but there will be a log now and then because even some of the saw logs are damaged so bad that they really need to come out of here. There's no sense growing trees that are, that are not healthy and are damaged. And that's from the ice storm? A lot of it is from the ice storm. A lot of it is just from poor management over the years. Anyways, uh, enough on that. Uh, I'm gonna eat my cupcake and have my coffee and then we'll get a few logs out and show you how good Baron is doing. I'll go up and show him. You didn't bring a coffee for yourself? Guy. No, I thought I'd have a sip of yours. I did have a sample of the cupcakes at home, so. Good cupcakes, by the way. I made peanut butter frosting for you. Love it. Since you're, it's your favorite. Okay, let's see how these guys are doing. Hi. Hi, Billy. How's it going this morning, you guys? Rough morning. I was thinking this morning as I was brushing Baron and looking at him, he's such a good looking horse. And I was thinking about the Suffolk breed that it's, um, it's gone down in numbers a lot. And I was kind of wondering why, if anybody knows, they sure are a nice horses so far. He's ready to roll. Ready to roll. Are you nervous at all with him still hooked to the log of it moving? He's tied. I know, but he can still like jerk it forward. Okay, let me get going and Apparently I'll not. explain a few things on what's going on here as I'm logging. He left me a sip. Awesome. Okay, we're way down here because that tree, you can see the butt of it right up there. And that was hung in that tree up there with this other tree hung in this tree. So there's two trees here that were hung up. And so I had to hitch onto that and pull it right on down through. So when you're dealing with young colt like this, I'm going to tell you some of the things that I, I personally like to do. Um, when I hitch onto a log at this stage, early, early stage in his logging career, I like to make sure the, that my 
if I'm using a, an older horse with a young horse, that the older horse has the power and the ability to handle that whole log all by himself. Um, now, he doesn't have to because the colt will always help some, but they, some colts just don't help that much. So I've got the evener set so that it, it's, uh, Bill has the hard end of the pole, just like I did with, with Ken when I was in the woods, I showed you. And so, um, but still, Bill has to be able to handle the log that's behind him. Um, with Baron, this is my second day here. And my first day, I just worked a few hours. But I must say, I don't think I've ever, I've, I've trained a lot of horses in the woods. And those horses have actually gone on to make pretty decent pulling horses. And I must say that of all those horses I've trained, Baron has had the most willingness to pull of any horse I've ever had at this early stage. So of course, you've got to be so, so careful when you're training these horses. If you want to continue to make them, let them, you know, if you want them to continue being good pulling horses, you can be so careful, at, especially at this early stage, not to stick them. Now, when I say stick them, that means you ask them to pull and they can't for any numerous reasons. As you get farther along in your training process, you will stick them. It just happens in logging. But you need to teach them to come back pulling hard after he has been on a log that he couldn't pull for some reason. It might just be he hit a stump. It might be you got a big limb back here. There's just numerous reasons why they can't pull. Um, so that's, that's what I'm dealing with. Um, so far he's doing really good, but I have to be very careful because he is doing so good, um, I've got to keep reminding myself that he's just a colt. So what I've done, like I said, I pulled down through here, and now I want to, I do have a trail out of here. This is not a trail, obviously, but I can get through all right. Um, and so if I can unhitch this, I would just um, come back and hitch onto that because we're going that way, obviously, back to our little skidway. But my chain is so tight, I possibly could release this, but it's gonna be a pain in the neck. I believe I can go right out this way. So I'm gonna to attempt to do that. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Cut this out. Cut this out. Ah. 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 Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see? 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 So I'm stopping right here because I need to unhitch and set myself over. Otherwise the cart's going to flip over. And I am in a position now where the end of the tree is in the air so I can get unhitched. Oh, 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 at this point, I was going to start explaining some things as to what I was doing, but I realized that I didn't want Baron to get the wrong cues for me, and he's not staying the best as it is, so I decided I better just tend to my work, and I figured I could talk it over later of some of the things I wanted to tell you. So the reason I'm setting this over and I'm putting the, the chain on the very edge of the cart so it's less apt to flip over, and uh, now I'm just kind of set myself over even a little bit more with the chains kind of long and I want to get myself set over so that I won't flip the card over of course. I tapped out. Oh. Good boy. Bye. Bye. Oh. 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 I tapped us out. Tap us out.
As I'm logging like this, I have to uh, keep telling myself how I'm not doing this for production. I'm doing this to train the Baron. So all these things that I'm doing, I have to keep telling myself how, 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 not to worry about producing how, but start teaching him things like standing still. Standing still is one of his biggest issues he's had all along. And he will get over that and, and get better. Bill is really good for him because he will stand good. And But I have, the even when I'm hitched to the log and tied to a tree, he's still doing that, and which is not that unusual. Um, but I'm sure he will get better in time. I cast out. Really? Really? Let's go get one more. Ah, there. Epa. Epa. Ha, 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 oh, and back up, back up, ha, 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 oh, back, up here, up here, oh, oh, Oh. I left my other chain on, on the original tree that I broke or I had troubles with. So I'm gonna go over there and pick that up first so I have my second chain. See? See? Hey, oh, bye. 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 Oh. Ho. Ho. No. Ho. No. No. Oh. I cap step. Careful, careful. Epa, epa, ha, ha, oh, ba, 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 oh, eh, ba, ba, Step a little 
าเราก็ดันหิ้งในนั้นใหญ่กว่านั้นไม่สามารถพูดและอธิบายได้ว่าทำไมทำเพราะมันทำให้เขาเดินไปเรื่อยๆฉันสามารถพูดได้ไหมไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยไปเลยแอบพ่อเอ็บเอ็บเอ็บเอ็อแอบอะแอบเอ็บเอ็เอ็บเอ็哦，哎 ，back up， 来，来，来，来，来，哦，接了点，哦，来，哦，好，好。Yeah. Yeah. Careful. Oh. Bye. Oh. Oh. I tap it up. Tap it. Oh. Good boy. So I'm tying the horses. I'm going to push up my logs.
ครับเฮ้เฮ้เฮ้เฮ้เฮ้ไอเจ้าUm, it's just amazing to me that he pulls like he does. How in the world does he know how to do that? I know you taught him, but like, how does he really know what to do? Is that the breeding, or is that? No, uh, it is not. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I mean, the breeding is great, uh, but um, you know, all horses. You know, if they're brought up, you know, in the process of all the training process, you know, with Ken on that scoot and all that stuff, he had to pull fairly hard on that. Um, he just, bit by bit, he learns. It's just what's so important that you don't overdo it and, and stick him. And that, because he will give up on, a, a horse will give up quite fast. But right now, he's just pulling super. I'm very pleased. Um, I just need to work on his... Um, patience mm -hmm. to stand still. Yeah, he was just pawing away. He just uh, has troubles there. Um, and the other thing is, it must be really something for them to learn. Like, when you stop and then you tell him to go again and he doesn't have anything behind him, like, you know. Yeah. A lot of times when I do that, I'll actually G or harm one way or another just so he knows, feels right off that he doesn't have that heavy piece behind him. So as he turns, he can set, he yeah. can feel that he's free. So. Well, I'm pretty proud of him. Yeah, I am too. He's doing really well. Um, there's a long ways to go. And uh, and also Billy. Billy's being very good with is. him. He is very good. I thought maybe Boy. I'd have to put brain straps on him to log, and it's just not necessary. Um, he's working just fine as is. And I, you said you didn't want to do too much, you know, like production-wise. But to me, those look like they're hardwood. They look like pretty good yeah, I jags mean, of... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> considering all the troubles, I, I must spent forever on those stupid trees that were hung up. And are those... That really curvy one was a problem? Or no? That... No, it's just the fact that so often a tree will have a prong in it. See that prong right there and that tree right there? Well, if you cut another tree into that prong, it binds up in there so hard it takes a tremendous amount of power to pull... A, if a tree is in that prong to pull the tree yeah, out of that prong. I get, I, yeah. And I did it twice. No, yeah, I did it twice. Did you notice any hesitation or anything after that? I know you no, don't want no. to do that, but like no. he seemed Well, to every time I asked him to pull, they still pulled. They went, we went quite a ways with it till it caught us really hard. And, um, did you so. tell them to stop right away? Yeah. yeah. So they, yeah. yeah so but they did excellent. So, okay. I guess that's it. Um, so that's it for our video. You guys have a great day. Baron, we'll, can you say goodbye? We'll see you next time. Thanks for coming.